Two teams in desperate need of a win. Brittany Perea and the Denver Dream Battle. Matei Vincent and the Omaha Heart. Next. Nothing like a strong woman that takes what you want. That's powerful. We make history when you step on that football field. Now's the time to release that anger, that pain on them. Do you believe in miracles? They don't deserve no mercy. Them get put down or they get laid down. The most successful people in life have failed. We have failed. Everything we've ever asked for is right in front of us right now. So let's get it. LFL football night has arrived to America's heartland, Omaha, Nebraska. Welcome inside the broadcast booth of LFL football night tonight. We've got a pair of teams that are really building toward the 2019 season. Although the Omaha Heart are still very much so alive in the playoff picture in the Eastern Conference. However, they would have to travel to Chicago next week and beat the Chicago Bliss in Chicago. Very unlikely scenario. For the Denver Dream, they're coming in winless, but this is a roster really trending upwards. Now I welcome in my broadcast partner, Bobby Huco. Now, Bobby, what would you like to see from these two teams tonight? Well, for Omaha, the heart simply has to show just that, heart. They've been going through the motions all year long. In fact, no physicality up front, no emotions. The head coach, Dante Allen, his job is on the line. He's got to perform these last two games. The same with the team. A lot of these players might not be here next, next year. They have to play well tonight. And then on the other side for Denver, head coach Adam Johnson. He needs to be more authoritative out there. The assistant coach, Marcus Janelle, he seems to be the one running the show. But the big question tonight is the quarterback position. Brittany Perea, I really want to see how she advanced. And is she Denver's quarterback for next season? I think that is really the question, right? Especially at a key position like quarterback, you want to make sure you have that shirt up. And is Brittany Perea, to your point, part of that future? Then you talk about Liz Kamak. Is she a starting running back in the LFL? I think tonight's a big night for her and an opportunity. Defensively, Denver is coming in without two of their studs. Rafael Frenchy, the defensive end, and Nicole Curry, the safety, both out of the lineup tonight with injury. However, take notice of Kelsey Cristiano. This is the emerging star on that defense, a sure tackler, a great motor defensively. But I think the big story tonight, I think both of us would agree, is Bria Quintana. Folks, she is back in the lineup after breaking her leg against the Omaha Heart earlier this season. Believe it or not, miraculous comeback. In fact, we sent our own Heidi Golznick to sit down with Bria Quintana, talk about the injury and her return. Bri, a tough period for you. Walk me through that play. When did you realize you were seriously hurt? Well, the moment that her knee engaged in my ankle, um, I knew that my ankle just snapped. And that's the moment that I realized, you know, that was it for me, so. What has been the toughest part about recovery? The toughest part was basically learning to walk again and not being able to walk. Having to take a shower with one leg, <laughs> propping up on stuff, I mean, it was just brutal. Like, going from a lifestyle from walking all the time to not being able to walk it's just it's just crazy you know it was just very difficult for me so thanks heidi quintana is simply a beast denver in chase of its first win while omaha can keep their playoff hopes alive with the win next back to lfl football night in omaha nebraska mitch mortaza bobby huco and Ms. Heidi Golsneg down on the sideline. A game that still has playoff implications. With a win, Omaha stays alive in the Eastern Conference Championship. Anxious to see the quarterback play tonight of Lindsey Noble. Her first start at quarterback since 2014. Offside, defense, number seven. Five yard penalty, remains first down. A little anxious, Bria Quintana coming off that ankle break a little early to the center that time. It's amazing, she's playing football. I thought she was out for a year. That was one of the ugliest injuries we've ever seen and she's back playing tonight. 
So now a first and five. Ball moves up to the 20. Noble with the handoff to Matei Vincent. Nice tackle there by Kelsey Cristiano and Bria Quintana as we meet the starters for Omaha. Courtney Atwater, tight end. Mama Cita, center. Lindsey Burst, tight end. Lindsey Howell, wide receiver. Schlin Durham, the fullback. Matei Vincent, halfback. Lindsey Noble, quarterback. Besides the big change at quarterback, watch out for halfback Matei Vincent. They're going to go conservative tonight. There is Vincent in the open field. Touchdown! This team already looking different with Lindsey Noble and that breakout running back, Matei Vincent. Watch when she gets to the second level. She turns a corner and then turns it into fifth gear going down the sideline. Should have been tackled there. The safety trips and she walks into the end zone. A perfect start for the Omaha Heart. Kelsey Cristiano could not track her down and that is the block that opened the run up. Deja Phillips unloading on the Denver defense. And they're gonna go to Phillips. She cannot convert the extra point. But a great start for Omaha, and we've got fisticuffs already. We've talked about the fire in the Omaha heart, how they haven't had it all season long, no emotion. Already the first series. Two great blocks by Shaylin Dorham and Deja Phillips. Open it up for Vincent around the corner. They look great so far. That's the fire you talked about in the pregame show. We just haven't seen it in the first two games from Omaha. As we get our look at Denver, let's meet their starters. Jessica Johnson, tight end. Brittany Gathers, center. Lindsey Q, tight end. Kelly Roque, wide receiver. Vonna Majano, wide receiver. Elizabeth K. Mack, running back. Brittany Puria, your quarterback. Watch out for Liz Kamak, the running back. When I spoke to head coach Adam Johnson, he said the game plan is to give the ball to Kamak and let her run the football tonight. A first and 10 for Denver. They'll start from their own 15. That's Shea Bellion in motion. And here comes that Omaha defense led by Deja Phillips. That'll be a three yard loss as we meet Omaha's defensive starters. Chris Mitchell, corner. Jimmy Lumberg corner. Shalane Durham, free safety. Jacqueline Good, your linebacker. Deja Phillips, linebacker. Chelsea Hoffman, defensive end. Lindsey Burst, defensive end. The big change, of course, is Jackie Good going back to linebacker from quarterback. She was a potential all-fantasy defensive end. Let's see how she plays tonight. So a second and 13, ball backed up to the Denver 12. They're gonna go back to K-Mac. K-Mac finding a hole and it's shut down almost immediately. Shalyn Durham and Lindsey Burris all over K-Mac. Two veterans right here, Burris and Durham. They come up hard and they knock her for only a short gain. Look at the fire they got tonight, I like it. So that was a gain of two yards, now setting up a third and 11. We'll see if Denver feels comfortable enough to now start testing the arm of Brittany Perea. Perea does not have a strong gun, so they're gonna try to keep it underneath with a passing game tonight. Third and 11, similar set going back to K-Mac. K-Mac finding real estate this time on the outside. A nice run, a seven yard gain for the rookie running back. You can see the leg explosion that K-Mac has around the edge. She had great blocking on the outside. That is the game plan. Just block for her and let her find daylight. Interesting now, fourth and four. Denver cannot elect to punt because they're beyond the 15-yard line. So they're going to have to go for it here. We haven't seen Perea throw the football. This would be a perfect opportunity with that run come up with a play-action pass. So now a fourth and four. This Denver offense going to be tested. Again, the same set. They're going to try to get the edge. Perea, nothing doing. How about the effort of this Omaha defense? 
That time it was Jacqueline Good and Lindsey Burst cleaning up. Jackie Good from the linebacker position. I don't like this call at all. It's a quarterback sweep. She never got a chance to turn the edge. She went backwards. I would have given the ball at least back to K-Mac. Jacqueline Good whiffing on the tackle. Luckily, Lindsey Burst there to clean up. As now we meet Denver's defensive starters. Table Legend, corner. Asia Walker, corner. Kelsey Cristiano, safety. Jessica Johnson, safety. Bria Quintana, middle linebacker. Sasha Cruz, defensive end. KK Phelps, defensive end. The big story tonight is the return of linebacker Bria Quintana, one of the best in their league coming back from a compound fracture. And that's another great run by Matei Vinson. I'll tell you what, Vinson's looking good early. Mama Sita had a great block up front. Vinson's got that leg explosion. I love it. She gets to the hole quickly. Matei Vinson, 5'3", but 165 pounds. And you could see the numbers she's put up this season. I love that average of 5.9 yards per carry. That puts her up as one of the top running backs in the LFL. They're going to go back to Vinson. Touchdown, Omaha. Wow, I know it's early, but right now, Vincent is Denver's kryptonite. They cannot stop her. Matei Vincent plays with abandon. You could see great blocking on the edge there by Shauna Wagner and Shalyn Durham. Breaking free, Matei Vincent. Mama Sita playing center to pull like that. That is an outstanding play by a great center. How about this Omaha offense already posting 12 points? And that's an inside handoff to Shalyn Durham. Make it 13 to nothing, Omaha. They came out fighting tonight. Vincent, she's playing so good. It's almost like the other families, the teammates came out to watch her play. And that will take us to immediate timeout as Omaha's up 13 to nothing. Let our other safety over top take care of everything. We'll be fine. Now that's two in a row. We can't let this shit get out of hand. Come on, ladies. I can't play for you. You got to go out there and produce. You have to go out there and produce. That is Denver Dream defensive coordinator Marcus Janelle bringing us back to LFL football night. His defense right now on skates going backwards. I really expected them to come out playing hard football but tonight. But I'm going to tell you what, Kale Good and Dante Allen, they got this Omaha team on fire. A first and 10. That is a draw play to K-Mac. K-Mac finally getting some positive yardage. That was a six-yard carry. I like the way K-Mac turns her shoulders and gets good body control when she gets to the point of attack. Liz K-Mac, another small statured running back, 5'4", 140 pounds from Denver, Colorado. They believe that she can become that franchise running back. She can. She reminds me a lot of Christel Harris in Chicago and now Atlanta, but she's got that fire in her legs. That's quite the leap. Bobby Huco putting everybody on a mantle. Second and four. They're going to keep it this time. Brittany Perea on a quarterback keeper. A seven-yard run, and that'll be a first down for Denver. Perea has a good football acumen. Watch this play, she makes out of nothing. But the big play is the crackback block by Lindsey Fields. Watch her come back, make sure she doesn't hit her in the back, but she nails burst. This offensive line for Denver has been suspect this season. That time, Lindsey Fields, the right tight end, getting a great seal block on Lindsey Burst. Now a first and 10 play. Another draw to K-Mac. Look at the speed of K-Mac getting the edge, and that'll be good for six yards. K-Mac has great game speed. You saw right there, Deja Phillips had a shot to get her in the backfield, and she just blew right by her. There's K-Mac's numbers this season. Not gonna blow you away, certainly not Christel Harris as you alluded to. Not yet. But there is potential. <laughs> now a second and four. We have yet to see Brittany Perea throw the football. What does that tell you about the offense and the offensive coordinator? I think they're going too conservative. She can throw it. I know she can't throw deep that well, but she can throw underneath. And here it is on cue. That was a great pass dropped. That looked like that was intended for Alicia Watson and nearly intercepted. She threw it on timing, a perfect pass. The receiver was not ready for the ball. Legal formation, defense, four in the box. Five yard penalty, remains second down. 
That's a defensive penalty on Omaha with four people in the box. You can only have three, and the box constitutes the defensive ends and the middle linebacker. Outside of the 10-yard line, you cannot put a fourth person inside that box. The reason they're stacking up the box like that, they're not scared of any passing game from Perea. So that'll make it a first down. Head referee Noel Mastel said second down, but no, that'll be a first and 10. That's Perea trying to create from the quarterback position. Only a gain of about a yard. A read option for Perea. She tried to follow the back up on the A-gaps right there. Jackie Good came up and made a good stop from the linebacker position. Second and nine, this Denver offense moving the ball. And they're gonna need a score here. They're down 13 to nothing with three minutes left here in the first quarter. I'm with you, Adam Johnson, who's also the offensive coordinator, should try some play action passes with Perea. They're, they're stacking the box, the safeties are up. Just fake it to K-Mac and throw it. A second and nine, full backfield. They're gonna give it to K-Mac, their workhorse. That time a four yard carry. And we've got another flag. This could be a hold on Denver. We'll get the call here shortly from Noah Mastel. There was absolutely nothing there. K-Mac with her speed outside got some yardage, but we'll see what the call is. There is no foul for legal defense on the prior play. So again, they thought they had Omaha with four people in the box, but the ball was inside the 10-yard line. So Omaha can set up with any kind of defensive formation. That was a good non-call by the referees. This group tonight's one of the top group of Zebras in the league, and they said, no way, that wasn't a penalty. They pulled it back. So a third and five from the Omaha six-yard line. Denver can still get a first down inside the one. Perea under center, sending Alicia Watson in motion. They're going to go up the middle and test that middle of that defense, bulldozing over several Omaha defenders. Not sure I like that play either. Alicia Watson was literally a half a foot behind the quarterback. You can't get any momentum going into the line of scrimmage. So here's another key fourth down play for this offense. A fourth and two. You got to convert here. They have K-Mac back there. Nobody stopped her so far tonight. I would totally give her the football right now. Keep in mind, this Denver offense can still get a first and goal at the oh, one. Time out! Time out! Time out! No, didn't do it! No! That's not... That's cool. I died left. left. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, we need two yards. First. Only a two yards. Yes. I died left. Because you can't go up the hole. We can't do four back. That is Saul Anderson and Brittany Perea not on the same page, and we'll take a timeout. Back to LFL football night before this timeout. Brittany Perea did not like the play call from Saul Anderson. I like that. That shows you her development at quarterback. She didn't like the call from Anderson. She called timeout and went over there and talked it out with him. That is a good sign if you're a Denver Dream fan the maturation of number three. Now a fourth and two. They're gonna go inside to K-Mac and get a surge. They're gonna call it a touchdown. What a surge up the middle by that Denver interior line. That was actually Alicia Watson with the run. That was an elementary call to Watson right up the gut. Oh, that's not good news right there. Jackie Good down on her back. And she was right in the middle of this surge. You can see this is just pure will by that front line of Denver pushing back good in company into the end zone. Brittany Gathers and Perea, they got behind the running back Watson and just pushed her in the end zone. Brute strength. That looked like somebody may have just landed on Jacqueline Good. Hopefully she just got the wind knocked out of her. We'll try to get a report down on the field with Heidi. And now she's just being helped off the field. The whole pile came right on top of Good. I hope she's OK. It's a big transition going from quarterback to linebacker in one week. Yeah, that's a big personnel move. We talked about it throughout the season that Jacqueline Good really struggled at the quarterback position and is back to more of her natural position at linebacker. I'm not sure that she was 100% behind the move going back to linebacker, but right there, you can see what it is to play in the middle of a football field. You get blown up right there. She has a little water in her eyes right coming off the field. 
So now, Denver with a two-point attempt on the conversion. k -Mac and Watson in the backfield. They're going to go to k -Mac, And k -Mac cannot get the edge. That time it felt like the Omaha defense knew what was coming. Denver did what they had to do, though. They stopped the bleeding. They were getting shut out. They moved right down the field. They gave it to Watson. Now they're back in the ballgame. An eight-play, 35-yard drive, chewing up four minutes and 28 seconds. That was impressive. In the pregame, who spoke about, was Brittany Perea going to step her game up at quarterback? After watching that drive, I think she sure did. She showed a lot of poise out there, calling timeout, questioning a coach, and leading that team in the end zone. The one concern I would have is the lack of a passing game, or at least trying to establish a passing game with Brittany Perea. Because if you're just going to run K-Mac and Watson, this defense is going to tee off. Absolutely. you got to blame Adam Johnson and Saul Anderson on that. They didn't try to pass. It's not the player's fault. So a first and 10. Omaha going to Matei Vinson. And Vinson just losing her footing there. Will lose a yard on the carry. I like the way she tried to pump it outside. But the one thing I didn't like, she held the ball with her inside arm. That could easily be knocked out by a linebacker coming from the inside. That's Kale Good. They got to coach the running backs how to hold the football. Vincent is very raw in her first year in the LFL, as well as obviously this offensive system. I think she could become a great every down back if she's taught the position. She is raw. I like her upside. I like the way Noble's playing quarterback, except for that. Second and 11 wide open. Shalyn Durham connecting with Lindsey Noble on a 36-yard touchdown bomb. Boom goes to Dynamite. That is the longest touchdown pass in Omaha history. Noble looked great. She had great poise in the pocket. She ran into a running back. She was poised. She stepped up and threw a bomb. Touchdown, Omaha. Who would have called this play? Certainly not with Shalyn Durham. Not exactly one of the faster players on this roster, but pretty sure-handed. And how about Noble, the spark that she has provided this team off the bench. So now the two-point attempt. They're going to go to Vinson and getting blown up by Kelsey Cristiano. We've got Cristiano and Vincent mic'd up. Let's listen in. Kelsey Cristiano has such a high ceiling. We talked about her also. She is just a nasty player for linebacker and also safety that plays through the whistle. Omaha's offense responding with a two-play, 35-yard drive that only took a minute four. So now the pressure going back on Brittany Perea in this Denver offense. You got to hand it to head coach Dante Allen. One change at quarterback, bringing Lindsey Noble in, changed the whole complexion of this team. They are playing like a team going to the playoffs. First and 10, ball at the 15, and that entire front line of Omaha jumped. Brittany Perea trying to salvage a run, does gain five, but this should be an offside penalty on Omaha. Even though it's a penalty, you got to light the fire. That defensive line, they were coming in aggressive. Noah Mastel still talking this over. Offsides, defense, number 14. Five-yard penalty remains first down. That offside penalty on Lindsey Burst, but that entire front line appeared to jump. So that'll set up a first and five for this Denver offense. It should be the final play of the first quarter. Lindsey Burst, he has both ears pinned back tonight. That will officially bring us to the end of the first 10 minutes of play from Omaha, Nebraska, where the hometown Omaha Hart looking impressive offensively on the arm of Lindsey Noble and the legs of Matei Vincent. Back after this. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. Back to LFL football night. Before we get underway, let's go down to the field for an injury update. 
Guys, it appears Jackie Good of Omaha has suffered a rib injury, but her return is probable. Back to you guys. That is great news for Omaha. The entire pile fell on her ribs, but she's a tough cookie. And with the playoff hopes coming up for Omaha for the next two games, she's not leaving the football game. Now, is that a big psychological readjustment for somebody to play the quarterback position and now have to shift that mindset to become a defensive end or a linebacker? You gotta change your game 180 degrees, completely opposite, because at quarterback, you do not want to get hit. Now you have to have that football mentality where you want to kill people. So now a first and five, ball at the Denver 20. And that's the left tight end. Jessica Bauman seems to be swaying back and forth. They're going to get the snap off. That's to K-Mac. K-Mac getting the edge and blown up. What a hit by Jamie Lundberg, but not before K-Mac picks up 13 yards. Now that play there is why I compared her to the Ferrari, Chris Del Harris. She came down the middle, then bam, bouncing outside, completely outran Chelsea Hoffman and got a big gainer before getting smacked against the wall. So now a first and 10 for this Denver offense. An offense that's okay. looked pretty good. It's just the defense has given up a ton of yardage on the Omaha side. And this offense has been in catch up mode since. You saw what happened with Omaha when they went play action, they threw a touchdown wide open. That's what Denver should do. First and 10, poor snap back to Perea. And Perea finding open grass. 14 yard keeper by the quarterback, Brittany Perea. That's why Perea is in the game. The offensive line not playing that great. She is quick as a hiccup. I don't know how she got outside, then cut inside. She is great in open space, makes a big play out of nothing. They had Perea penciled in at wide receiver at the beginning of the season. We all know the story, Mary Towner, who was supposed to be the starting quarterback, showed up out of shape, just like she was last season. So we begin the era of Brittany Pereira at quarterback. She's making a good show, and I'd like to see her throw the ball a little bit more, but so far, so good. And that looks like maybe the right side of that Omaha line may have jumped. We'll get the call here shortly. Offsides, defense, number 15. Half the distance to the goal, remains first down. The call is against Kayla Wegman. That front line of Omaha, not very disciplined on the defensive side. Not at all. In fact, I really like this game, though. It's really evenly matched. Both teams playing solid football in the running game, passing the game. Noble showing us he, she has the arm. Perea, she looks great. Fun game to watch. So now, a first and goal. Ball inside the three-yard line. Make it the one-yard line. That is K-Mac. Liz K-Mac with the Denver touchdown. K-Mac ran right through Mama Sita. Mama Sita had her in the backfield, and it was Mama Mia, Mama Sita. She went right in the end zone. I tell you what, K-Mac is starting to impress me. It's really the speed. And again, just like Matei Vincent of Omaha, with an entire offseason at the position, she may have a bright future ahead of her in Denver. I like it because she never takes her foot off the gas. She just keeps going right through Mama Sita. So now 12 to 19 becomes a one score game and this will be a one point attempt. Why not go back to K-Mac? And K-Mac getting into the end zone. This becomes a 14 to 19 game after the successful two point conversion. This is a great game to watch as far as with the running game. You got two solid backs, Vincent and K-Mac putting on a show. Lindsey Noble going back to work. Noble showing that arm strength with a 36-yard touchdown to Shalin Durham. This time from the shotgun. Receivers flanked to the right side. So another poor snap back to Noble. She's going to hand it off. That's Vincent. And Vincent breaking through arm tackles. We do have a flag. An early indication is a hold. Vincent is their money player tonight, just running through people. But you're right, I think it's coming back. That was a 20-yard carry, and she showed you again some speed. Great bounce outside, and she runs right through Balgeron, but I think Lindsey Howe, in fact, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a takedown. They're bringing this back. Holding offense, number 14, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. 
remains first down. If you look up holding in the dictionary, this is a classic hold. Watch how, coming in on motion, a little short motion, crack back block, but she does not block. This is a WWE takedown. Wow, that is holding. That's how you get an open runner outside. She took down Sasha Cruz, who re-signed with the team this past week. So that wipes out the 20-yard run by Matei Vincent. A first and 16 ball at the nine. Hand off to Howell to try to make up for that penalty. Howell will gain six yards on the carry, and we've got another flag, and now fists are flying. That is Jessica Johnson. And they've got to pry her off several Omaha players. I'm not sure what was said in the pregame, perhaps. These two are going at each other all night. Get on her! Fuck her up! They're cheating on her. Fucking false start. False start, holding, push her back. Holding. Offense, number nine. After the play was over. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number nine. Both penalties will be assessed. Remains first down. So a pair of penalties on Courtney Atwater of Omaha. First a holding call and then an unsportsmanlike call. That'll back this offense up, creating a first and 22. You talk about a player who needs a Snickers bar. Talk about a drive cure. They're back in their end zone. This is Noble keeping it herself. And getting into the open field, a 14-yard carry by Lindsey Noble. We've seen Brittany Perea do that, but Noble is also very mobile. I'm telling you what, Lindsey Noble is silencing a lot of her critics tonight, but he's throwing the ball and running the ball. She hasn't started as a quarterback in four years. She looks great. You know, I don't want to say we told you so, but all season long, you and I have been saying why is Lindsay Noble on the sideline and Jackie Good starting? She is definitely a catalyst for this Omaha team. She gives offensive coordinator Kale Good all kind of options with the play calling. That is a quick screen to Lindsay Howell. That'll be good for four yards. Now setting up a third and eight. Make it a third and four. I know it's early in the game, but Lindsay Howell looking like she's going to be the go-to receiver for Lindsay Noble. At least Omaha is trying to create some balance offensively and not just keeping it on the ground with Matei Vinson, but allowing Lindsey Noble to open it up a little. A third and four from the Omaha 21. This is Noble calling her own number. She'll gain 14 yards, still surging ahead. So after a first and 22, this offense manages to pick up a first down. Watch the fire when she runs the football. She runs aggressively, cuts it up north-south, not blocking, cuts inside. Great play by Noble again. I'm telling you what, she's really picked up this entire team. You can feel it. You notice a lot of quarterbacks in the LFL, Dakota Hughes, Michelle Angel, and others, will go out of bounds. But we've seen Brittany Perea and Lindsey Noble cut it back in and pick up some pretty substantial yardage. Noble's got that defensive mentality when she runs the football, trying to hurt people. First and 10, we've got a timeout. I believe timeout. Omaha. Omaha, first timeout of the half. Omaha electing to call a timeout. Let's go down to the field. That freaking corner needs to go. They're picking on that side. You have to go. But you have to make the tackle, because if you miss it, she's picking up matches with main yards. We've got to get it. We've got to clean it up. Coach Marcus Janell, he's telling the cornerbacks, Ashley Walker and Shea Balgeron, you got to come up. Even though they're not great tacklers, not, not many corners are, you got to turn the play inside, get help from the linebackers. So this is a first and 10 jet sweep. That's Rebecca Gordon. Gordon has had some impact on this offense. And a great open field tackle that time by Jessica Bauman. Rebecca Gordon, she's an average of five yards every time she touches the football. You're right, that jet sweep action. She has a full head of speed getting around the edge, and she's a great player from Kansas that they love giving the football to. Kansas by way of Australia. We're starting to see a lot of women from around the world make the trip to the States. This is Jamie Lundberg, and Lundberg with a nice run of six yards. And what's new, we've got another penalty down on the field. 
I like the way Lundberg bounced the ball outside, but you'll see in the middle, Mama C to the center, another takedown. This is why she got open outside. Right up the middle, Cristiano came up, and she got tackled by Mamacita. Yeah, Kelsey Cristiano, we talked about her, is a playmaker defensively, and that's the only way you're going to control her is a bear hug. We'll see if that is indeed the call. We have two fouls on the previous play, one for each team. Illegal defense, number 14. That penalty is declined by rule. Holding, number 17. Offense, that penalty will be assessed, remains second down. Indeed, they're going to call the holding, and that's going to do the majority of damage on Shauna Wagner, better known as Mama Sita. That wasn't even close. She came in there and almost took her head off and then slammed her to the ground. You can't do that. Back it up, back it up, back it up. Kelsey Cristiano guiding some traffic out there. This Omaha offense is going to be backed up again. Second and 24. We did see them overcome that first and 22 earlier in the quarter. And now that we know Lindsey Noble can fire the football down the field, it's going to be fun to watch. Second and 24. That is Noble up the middle on a design keeper, now setting up a more manageable third down. Lindsay Noble, she looks like she's been playing quarterback her entire life, taking control of the huddle. She looks like she knows the game plan, not fumbling the football, not throwing an interception, just all-around great effort. Ball down to the Denver 13. Now a third and eight. This offense trying to dig itself out of a hole after those penalties. That handoff to Deja Phillips. Phillips has struggled in the run game. She doesn't have the explosion or the speed that Matej Vincent has. That is correct. Deja Phillips, she is deceptively slow. She can't get around the edge like the other backs can, and it showed right there. This Denver defense has had opportunities to get stops, had Omaha with a first and 22, and now a second and 24. An opportunity here on a fourth and 10 to get a stop finally and give their offense a shot. Adam Johnson right now, if they get a stop here, this game is completely turned around. Somehow, I know she just came off a compound fracture, but she's got to get this defense fired up to make a stop. You could see Bria Quintana is not in the same physical shape she was in before the injury, so I am sure that's having an impact tonight. This is Noble from the shotgun, trying a touch pass to Lindsey Howell. You could see Howell complaining about pass interference. I like the way she isolated and found the one-on-one -on -one receiver. Hal going against Alyssa Strongo. She had her out there, just overthrew it. So now Denver, with that much-needed stop defensively, will give Brittany Perea and crew another shot at potentially taking the lead going into halftime. I hope that Saul Anderson and Marcus Chanel open up the game, give her a chance to pass the football. First and 10 at the Denver 15 from the shotgun. Perea looking over that Omaha defense. Another poor snap. k in the open field. And she's going to take it to the house. Touchdown, Denver. Leeds k -Mack. she is high key tonight. Running right through everybody. We've got a penalty flag. This may be another hold. Let's take a look at the replay down the field. That is Kelly Roquet. And right there, she holds Jamie Lundberg. Lundberg was not even going to get k -Mack. I'm not sure why she did that. That would have been six points. We have multiple fouls on the previous play. Illegal defense, number 14. That penalty is declined by rule. Holding, number 10, offense. That 10-yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot. After the play was over, Unsportsmanlike conduct, number two, on the defense. That penalty we enforce half the distance. Is there anybody that we don't have a penalty on? You can see both benches are upset with the call. Hey, will you hand me that notebook? I got to take some notes on this. That was like three consecutive penalties after other multiple penalties. I've never seen as many penalties. I feel it's like it's fear factor with these yellow flags everywhere. Yeah, this officiating crew is either looking for camera time, because I got to tell you, that was a hole down the field with Kelly Roquet. 
Nonetheless, now we got a first and 10 at the Omaha 23 yard line. Still a lot of time left. Three minutes, four seconds, and Denver does have a timeout. Aside from all those penalties, I know one thing. K-Mac can run the football. What a run. I know it's not going to count on the board, but she's made some jump cuts and quick cuts outside. Cat quick reflexes. That was awesome. Pure explosion by Liz K-Mac. So if nothing else, Denver can go away from this game feeling pretty good about finding a franchise running back. And at the quarterback position, Perea, she's not lighting it up, throwing the ball, but it's a game manager. She's doing okay. You saw Jacqueline Good there coming back from the locker room. It looks like her ribs are all taped up. Her return at this point is probable. We'll check on it at halftime. Rib injuries are tough because you can't move. You can't even turn your head without pain. First and 10, ball at the Omaha 23. Perea electing to stay in the shotgun. Liz Kamak flanked to the left of Perea. Another bad snap. Kamak trying to evade the rush. Burst getting there early, and Deja Phillips cleaning up. The center, Brittany, gathers another bad snap. She's killing this offense. And they don't have a chance if they don't get the football to the quarterback. This Omaha defense has played the best I have ever seen it. They are pursuing the ball, pinning their ears back. They're playing with confidence. They're playing with confidence, and it all starts again with the quarterback. If they know they got a team that can score points, that fires up the defense. It does allow the defense to play a little more freer. And now a second and 25 after that sack. This is Brittany Perea trying to get that back and then some. Still on her feet. Now cutting inside. How about the running of Brittany Perea and Liz Kamak? That was a 22 yard carry. That Perea carry will take us to the two minute warning as Denver is starting to fight back. Clear the mechanism. We don't hear the crowd. We don't care what's happening. Let's not worry about what the refs are going to do to us, okay? Execute this play. Execute this play. Look how much time is on that clock right now. How many timeouts we got, coach? We have one timeout. So, we're going to get it. I need this out of you. I need this one out of you. Now, they're not going to, they're not giving it to us. And they're going to play dirty. But let's get out there and do what we got to do. I promise you this right now. I promise you, if you score here, this crowd shuts up and that team gets fear in them. All right? Turn it up. Turn it up. We need this. Step aside, Tony Robbins, Marcus Juniel, once again bringing us back on LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza, Bobby Huco, and Heidi Goldsnick. Coach Chanel was right on with all those points. If they score here, it takes the crowd out of the game. And forget all those penalties the refs are calling. Just play your game. This is Brittany Perea having this Denver offense on the move. Toss left, Kamak cutting back inside. A great open field tackle that time by Chelsea Hoffman. I cannot tell you how good a tackle this is. She squares up right on Kamak. Kamak makes a jump cut. She grabs anything she can and brings her down by herself. What a play by Hoffman. This Denver offense still has time on the clock. They're going to go back to the horse. K-Mac getting outside for a gain of eight yards, and that'll also stop the clock. There's only a couple backs in the league I call dangerous. Right now, she's getting up into that category. Every time she touches the football, boom, she is gone. Denver does have a timeout remaining. And once again, they are nearing the red zone. This offense hasn't had a problem moving the ball. It's closing the deal down here near the red zone. Right now, they go in the end zone. It's a whole new ball game. This is a fun football game so far. These offenses have been going back and forth. Denver with the opportunity to go ahead here before the half. That was another very low, poor snap back. And guess what? We've got another penalty. This has got to be a record number of penalties in one half of football. False start, number five of the offense. Five yard penalty, remains third down. 
I actually don't like what the refs are doing right now. At any level of football, you can throw flags every play if you want. Unless it's blatant, let them play football. It is definitely slowing down the pace of this first half and what otherwise has been a very good football game. Brittany Perea has to do what Coach Janelle told her. Forget about the penalties, come up with another big play right now. And you've got to start watching the clock. If you're Denver, you do have a timeout again. A third and eight ball at the Omaha 12-yard line. Perea seems to like the shotgun, but they cannot get a good snap back to her. And she's trying to get outside now and does. Rebecca Gordon with a touchdown saving tackle as the clock will continue to run here. It's amazing how she's getting through this defense on that read option. Don't like seeing the player down, but Perea came up with another huge play. A 10-yard carry by Brittany Perea, and you could see that option read. She has been, she's really built for that offense. It is, it's a read option, but the way she makes cuts is unbelievable. Watch the play right there. You see her leg get tucked under. That is not good for number five, Deja Phillips. Deja Phillips, it looked like her head area. Oh, we almost got that shit. That's Brittany Perea reacting to the replay of being tackled inside the two yard line. But I tell you what, she gives them that dual threat they did not have with Mary Towner. She doesn't have the big arm as you alluded to earlier, but she can complete the short passing game and obviously is very mobile. I cannot believe the way she eludes the rush and her cuts getting through the defense. She's not that blazing fast, but she's getting big yardage. As poor as that Denver defense has played, if Brittany Prey and company get it in here, they take the lead in a half that they haven't necessarily played great football. Right, if you give the ball to K-Mac right now, she should be able to get in the end zone. Denver lacks that power back, although Liz K-Mac has shown plenty of explosion. A first and goal as the clock continues. That was a design keeper going nowhere. What a first half of football Courtney Atwater is having at the defensive end position. Atwater has that woodpecker mentality tonight. She just keeps hitting and doesn't stop hitting. Timeout, Denver. Their second and final charge timeout of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout. Do not snap that ball until you see like five seconds on that clock. Oh, they're running well, out of clock. No, we're running out of clock, it doesn't right. matter. Go. We have no more timeout. Good. Good. A bit of confusion on the sideline there with Denver. Not sure if they had a timeout remaining. That was their final timeout of the half. So they've got to be careful here with 34 seconds. It's going to be costly, real costly, if they don't get in the end zone. I would still give it to K-Mac. You were on the two-yard line. She's the power back that you have. With 34 seconds, if K-Mac gets tackled, you still have enough time to kill the clock. Here's Perea under center. Electing to keep it herself, cutting back inside. Lindsey bursts on the tackle, and they need to get up here. There needs to be some urgency from this Denver offense. You see Omaha keeping the ball on the ground. There's got to be real urgency. They're down to 19 seconds. They got to get on the ball. Mama Sita playing that beautifully, just sitting on the football. We're under 10 seconds here. This is unbelievable if they don't get a playoff. You could see that Denver coaching staff looking at the board. They do get it off. <laughs> Lindsey Burse capping off a great first half of football with another touchdown saving tackle. Denver had the football second and goal from the two with 34 seconds left, and they couldn't pound it in. The quarterback, Perea, went the wrong way here. Everybody went left, she went right. There's no blocking, that cost them points. Shoddy play selection by the coaches and bad play by Perea right there to end a half. Surprising that they elect to go with Perea instead of K-Mac at the goal line. That will bring us to halftime in a back and forth game. Both offenses putting up points. Omaha in the lead, 19 to 14 behind the arm of Lindsey Noble, who's brought this team to life. This is our motherfucking game. We didn't come all the way down from Denver to get our ass whooped. We put in too much fucking sweat, tears, blood. Shit, I broke my fucking ankle. This is our game. 
A look inside that Denver Dream locker room as we welcome you back to LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco. A first half where the Omaha heart looks sharp on both sides of the football and now leading it 19 to 14 over the Denver Dream. The biggest takeaway that I got from that first half is quarterback play and the difference it can make on a football team. Absolutely. The LFL is a quarterback's league. You can tell the difference between good and bad play in a heartbeat. Their last game, Jackie Good, the it was a train wreck out there. That offense, nobody could play. Tonight with Lindsey Noble, they look like a football team. Seven players with one heart. She has 44 yards on the ground, passing three out of four with a touchdown pass. And Denver, offensively, it has been all on the ground. On the legs of Brittany Pereira, not her arm, but her legs. 57 first half rushing yards. And I think I'd be concerned if my offense was led by my quarterback rushing the football. Right, the problem's up front with Denver. Jessica Johnson, Brittany Feathers, Lindsey Fields, they're not blocking for anybody up there. They gotta step that game up, especially Feathers. She re replaced the injured center, Michelle Look, and did not play good at the ball. Didn't snap the ball well at all. They got to step their game up. Despite poor blocking, they did manage 14 first half points. Let's look at the scoring plays. Early on, it was all Omaha Heart in the first quarter, namely behind the wheels of Matei Vinson, the outstanding rookie running back, taking this one from 27 yards to the house, then added another 10 yard touchdown run. Through the air, it was Shalyn Durham, the veteran, hauling in this 36-yard bomb from Lindsey Noble. For the Denver Dream, Alicia Watson with this three-yard touchdown run. Then early in the second quarter, it was Liz Kamak with a one-yard run. That brings us to our halftime score of 19 to 14 as we look at beautiful downtown Omaha and our halftime stats. Denver's front line has got to play better offensively, and Brittany Perea, the quarterback, has to become a threat throwing the football. Denver had zero first-half passing yards. Omaha's offense, on the other hand, was well-balanced, with Bate Vincent having a breakout game. Expect the heart to keep it on the ground in the second half. Denver has 20 minutes left in its season in search of their first win. Omaha will look to stay alive in the playoff hunt. Here we go. The second half is next. Back to LFL football night as we look at our impact players. Liz Kamak of Denver and Matei Vincent of Omaha. Omaha's definitely had a change in the lineup at quarterback. Our own Heidi Golznick is with Lindsey Noble. Guys, I am with apparent savior at quarterback for Omaha, Lindsey Noble. Lindsay, I know Jackie Good is a great friend of yours off the field. Was it tough for you to be named starter over Jackie? Uh, you know, Jackie's really, really good at defense. She's more comfortable there. I've had some uh, experience the first two seasons at quarterback, and I think right now, tonight, at least in this game, it's fitting pretty well. A confident Lindsay Noble who now seems in full control of now her offense. Back to you guys for the start of the third quarter. I love Lindsay Noble. Her demeanor tonight is perfect for this team. Brought them back to life. And we saw the impact players. Both players had almost 50 yards rushing. Lindsey Noble almost had 50 yards rushing. What a first half. And we talked about it at halftime. Brittany Perea with 57 yards on the ground as well, actually outgaining Liz Kamak. So both these quarterbacks have really injected life into these offenses. This game is as advertised. We knew it wasn't going to be a throwing game, throwing the football down the field. Although Noble threw a bomb for a touchdown, it was going to be smash mouth football, running it on the ground. And it, I'll tell you what, it's a lot of fun. Good football game. First and 10 ball at the Denver 15. So Brittany Perea in the Denver offense will get the first shot here in the third quarter. And going down the field, there's what we talked about. Brittany Perea does not have the strong arm. And that's why I don't think this defense really fears the deep ball. Right, Medrano got behind Mitchell deep. If Brittany Perea gets rid of the ball quick, if you do a quick drop and throw it up top, then she can get it out there. She waited too long, doesn't have the gun to get it out there. Perea might not have the arm, but I agree with Saul Anderson, the offensive coordinator. You got to show this defense that you're willing to take shots down the field. Right, it opens it up, then you can go back to the running game. Second and 10 from the shotgun. The snaps have improved at least. That's a draw play. Liz Kamak. 
K-Mac was the big headline coming out of the first half and opens the third quarter with an 11-yard carry. Exactly what we talked about. The linebackers moved back because they finally tried a deep ball, and you saw how big the hole was for K-Mac. She is bad to the bone tonight. This Denver offense with Brittany Perea at the helm has not had any difficulty moving the ball. We did see them collapse at the end of the first half, had a second and goal inside the two, and were not able to come away with any points. A first and 10. Toss left, and that's fumble. Liz Kamak able to get back on top, but that'll be a loss of three yards. Smart play by Kamak. She took her eyes off the football, obviously fumbled the football. Just recover the football. Tee it up again. You made a mistake, but don't compound the mistake. Second and 12 after that three-yard loss. Brittany Perea and Denver definitely still in this game. Only a five-point gap. Good to see both of these teams who struggled most of the season play competitive football. Ball at the Denver 24. Decent snap back to Perea. And Perea now loses the ball. Denver's starting to get sloppy with their ball handling. And that'll be another loss of two yards. Going back to your point at the end of the first half, if they score points, which they should have from the two yard line, and they get the ball to start the second half, it's a game changer. It's a whole completely different ball game. But now they start out with two fumbles. They need to get their mojo back. So ball backed up to the Denver 21. That's offensive coordinator Saul Anderson. He certainly had an up and down season. I think at least he's finally identified a quarterback and a running back. Third and 15 toss to K-Mac. And K-Mac trying to run through the defender, Lindsey Burst. Brittany Perea trying to protect her running back, Liz K-Mac. And that's Mama Sita saying, look, I'm trying to get up. But you like to see that, a little bit of emotion down on the field. We talked about it in the first half. These two have been absolutely flat at times this season. This is a hungry football team under Lindsey Nibble. Don't forget, if they win tonight and somehow beat Chicago, they're in the playoffs. A fourth and 13 as this Omaha crowd comes to life. A deep drop for Perea, trying the flat, complete. That's caught by Jessica Johnson, but going the wrong way. That'll only be good for two yards as Omaha holds defensively and now puts Lindsey Noble and their offense in a great position. Not a good series for Berea at all there. She takes a little cheap shot at the end, gets it out there for a completion, but you need 13 yards. You can't throw a two-yard pass and expect to get 13. You got to throw it down the field. That is the lack of maturity from Brittany Perea at the quarterback position. You've got to know the game situation, where the sticks are, and get it down the field. Let's not go overboard. I'm not saying Perea is going to be a franchise quarterback. She's an adequate quarterback right now. For them to take the next step and get in the playoffs and win a championship, I'm, not, I'm still not sure she's the quarterback. On the other hand, Lindsey Noble having a lot of success in this offense, first and 10. They're going to go back to Matei Vincent. Vincent, a nice four-yard carry. That ball came out, but they're going to mark her down. Cristiano, I love her at linebacker. She plays a tough game. She's like a limited edition back there. I can see her being a star in this league. Denver, as we talked about, is missing some horses on the defensive side. Rafael Frenchy, the outstanding defensive end, and also Nicole Curry, who was having an all-fantasy-like season at the safety position. They got some players, and we know offense sells tickets, but defense wins game. They're going to be a solid team next year. Interesting to see if Omaha continues to stay on the ground with Vincent, trying to protect that five-point lead. The handoff does go to Vincent. Sloppy-looking handoff. Cristiano and Sasha Cruz all over it. That'll be a loss of two yards. Looks like those Denver corners are finally starting to play football. They saw the little bobble. They came in tight, and they got Vincent for a loss. 21, 21, That's Sasha Cruz, as I said. They re-signed her last week. 
She played a little center in 2017, but has not found her niche on this roster. Third and eight ball at the Denver 23. From the shotgun, Noble. Pocket breaking down, gonna take off with it. Gets to the sideline and nearly thrown over the board. That was an eight yard carry by Noble. She shows a lot of third down skills tonight. Watch how calm she is in the pocket. She makes her reads, nobody open, sees hole, sees daylight, and gets the first down. She runs great. A pair of mobile quarterbacks in Brittany Perea, and certainly Lindsey Noble. That eight yard carry setting up a first and 10 inside the Denver 15 yard line. This Omaha offense again on the move. Over the middle and complete. Not the best looking ball, but caught by Lindsey Howell. And again, we've got some words exchanged after the play. I like the way Noble climbed the pocket. She looked deep, saw the post pattern cover, went down the food chain and found Howell underneath. She looks like a quarterback. That was a make it a five yard completion. That'll set up a second and five. Howell is the one speedster they have on this roster outside of Marissa Mitchell Riley. That time working underneath. That's the third time that she went to Howell. This combination is gonna to be tough in the future. Second and five, another rush up the middle by Noble. That'll gain three yards. I think they stole that play from Chicago. It's the most boring play in football, but it gets you a couple yards. And that's Bria Quintana. You could see she's being just double teamed and pushed back. Certainly, 99 days after a broken ankle, you're not gonna be 100%. She'll be the first to tell you she thinks she's out of shape right now. A third and two handoff. That's Lundberg. Lundberg getting the edge. Touchdown, Omaha. Watch this, they went right at number two, Alyssa Strongle, double teamed the cornerback. She's on skates going backwards, and they walk in the end zone untouched. I'm gonna tell you what, this Omaha team, they had some bad games this year, either step up or step off, and they are stepping up tonight. I think Omaha certainly feels the urgency and perhaps may be playing for their head coach and his job, as Dante Allen is definitely on the hot seat. This is the extra point attempt. One point conversion by Noble. <laughs> Lindsay Noble's not gonna back down from anybody, much less Alyssa Stongel. So Omaha now extends its lead 26 to 14. An impressive six play, 25 yard drive taking up four minutes and one second, and led by that young lady, Lindsay Noble. In Omaha's previous game, which they lost, we saw some crying on the sideline and everything. Tonight, they're showing you win with execution, not emotion. This is a good Omaha football team. Good job, guys. Noble just exudes job, confidence right now. You could job, see job, she job, has everybody backing job, her on that bench and really has control of this offense. This crowd, I'm telling you what, they are fired up, we're fired up. It's a different team tonight, and Denver's playing good ball too. This crowd has not been treated to a lot of good football, so certainly, I'm sure enjoying every moment of this 26 to 14 lead. So a first and 10 for Brittany Perea. I'm not sure if that was intended to be handed off to Liz Kamak, perhaps a miscommunication as Perea is limited to a two-yard carry. A great tackle by Rebecca Gordon. You take that, one. that was a read option. She said it right there. She should have given the ball to K-Mac. In fact, you need to give the ball to K-Mac to get some big yardage. Then you come back and pull down the spread option like that. This Denver offense will have to make up a two-score margin with a little over 12 minutes remaining in this game. She's a competitor. You know she's not going to give up. Second and eight ball at the Denver 17. Another bad snap back to Perea. And Perea showing that arm. Dropped. Perea doing a great job to hit Kelly Roquet in stride. Roquet, we have seen her drop a lot of footballs this season. 
And that could have been six points. Wow, Pereira throws a frozen rope. That's the strongest ball she threw all night. Right on the money. You have to make that catch. That should be six points for Denver. Hands of stone. Wow. Not a big fan of Kelly Roquet at the wide receiver position. They just don't have a lot of talent at the skills positions. You have to make that catch, though. Before you run the football, it's a big game. You're moving the football, and it's a flat-out drop. That Roquet drop now setting up a third and eight. Ball at the Denver 17. Another dribbler back to Perea. Does manage to hand it off to K-Mac. K-Mac making up for that poor snap. That was a four-yard carry. I got to ask you, when you're having that much difficulty from the shotgun, why not move Perea under center? Absolutely. It's simple coaching. If your center's not getting the ball back to the quarterback in the shotgun position, go underneath. But you see what's happening. It throws the whole playoff, the timing, the mesh, everything. It's going to kill this offense. So now a fourth and four. This offense has faced fourth down a lot in this game. Here comes that Omaha crowd and a defense that smells blood in the water. That is Perea now adjusting, going under center. Toss right. k -Mac. Nothing doing. This Omaha defense knows the only player that's beaten them consistently has been Liz Kamak. Courtney Atwater, you spoke about her earlier in the game. She's having a whale of a game. Just shut down Kamak right there, one on one. She didn't give up the hole. She didn't over pursue. Held her ground and turns the ball over now. And great field position here for Lindsey Noble and this Omaha hey, offense. Start running forward. You guys are stopping. You gotta keep running. If you keep running forward, you'll get a Saul Anderson telling his whole offense, keep running forward, especially the backs, but the line, you have to have some drive blocks and give K-Mac a chance. That will bring us to the end of the third quarter. A quarter that saw Denver threatening, but this Omaha defense with a big fourth and four stop preserving a 26 to 14 lead as we head into the fourth quarter. When your number is called tonight, step up and make a name for yourself. Speak about all the people who doubt you, who say you can't, and go prove them wrong. This is not about who left this team, it's not about who came back, it's about who's here right now. Now we have to play like we've never played before, ladies. This isn't just football, this is family, sisterhood, it's your life, it's how you live your life. Look to the girl next to you and fight for your life. Fight for the girl who's sitting next to you in this huddle right now. This is all meant to be. Every single one of you is here tonight because of a purpose. We can do this. I know we can. This is the last time I'm going to tell you that I'm going to let you down because I will not do it again. Let them understand that we are not here to play games with them. This is our game. Give it everything you have, because all we got is 10 minutes. That's all we got. You have to make the tackles here. We can't miss tackles now, all right? If you, can't, if you can't break down, get in there and slow her down. But your girls are game tackling, which is good. But we need a turnover right now from the defense. We need to score. So right at this point in time, I want base, I want both our safeties flashing and knowing what you're doing. That's it. Let's roll it from there. Stay solid. Back to LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza, Bobby Huco, and down on the sidelines, Heidi Golznick as Omaha tries to add to its 26 to 14 lead. This is a handoff to Vincent. And just like the Omaha defense, I think this Denver defense is starting to really key on Matei Vincent. Well, you saw defensive coordinator Marcus Janelle on the sideline. He said they have to create a turnover. It's getting late in the game. They're down two scores. They have to make a stop or a turnover now. And what else is new? We've got another flag. Let's see if this is a potential hold. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 14. Omaha, 10-yard penalty. That's her first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the half. Second down. That call is on Lindsey Burse. I didn't really see anything there. 
They're really calling this one tight. I saw nothing at all right there. These refs might have to go in for Tommy John surgery after throwing flags so much tonight. And they called it unsportsmanlike on Lindsey Burst. As I mentioned, I didn't even see her out on the field. Nonetheless, this Omaha offense now facing a second and 20. From the shotgun. This is Noble back to pass. Now going to tuck it and take off with it. And tackled in the open field by Jessica Johnson. I didn't say hi. I, I know. I, I didn't hear you. And then I was like, what? I thought I heard you. Limited to about a three-yard carry is Noble. Omaha's going to have to tighten their game up right now. They're playing a little sloppy football right there. Mama Sink to snap the ball without Noble even doing a snap count. And then Noble didn't stay in the pocket long enough to read the defense and got no yardage running it. Again from the shotgun, receivers flanked to her left. That's complete. Rebecca Gordon. And Gordon with a nice-looking slant pattern. That was a gain of about eight yards. Good play, a tunnel screen. Noble got her to football quickly, let her run. That's the type of football they have to play. You mentioned it, one touchdown might seal this game. A fourth and 10. Let's see if Lindsey Noble and company can convert here as we get a look at Bria Quintana in a defense that's desperately trying to hold on. This is a designed quarterback keeper to the right side, no chance there. That is Kelsey Cristiano and Jessica Johnson. So finally, this Denver defense holding. They try to straight quarterback sweep. What a hit right there by Cristiano. Look at those arms. She looks like Popeye out there. I'm not sure about that call, though. Fourth and 10 quarterback sweep. That's almost like giving up. Dante Allen and Kale Good could just be playing a field position game as they have a two score lead. But there's a lot of time left here. And this quarterback, Perea, she is such a competitor. Came back, they're not giving up. I'm not sure if you want to just give the ball over to them like they're doing. Great field position for Denver. An opportunity here to make this a one score game. As Perea now smartly goes under center with Feathers really struggling at the center position. Rolling left, she just does not have the speed to get past Courtney Atwater. That is the fourth time tonight they tried the quarterback sweep with Perea, and it's not worked once. She gets no momentum. She goes backwards. Watch the center right here. Straight up, hits the player, but doesn't go into her. That's it. You have to drive through her. A terrible block. No protection there for Perea. She gets slammed. I am absolutely shocked that Brittany Feathers is still in this ball game at the center position between the poor snaps and lack of blocking, which is pretty much the MO for a center. I'm shocked she's still in there. Second and seven. Freya faking the toss, now gonna take off with it again. And if there's gonna be a knock on Brittany Perea, is I don't think she allows the passing game to develop. Absolutely, I think the play selection, I actually like the call. You fake the sweep, you hit the quick post. I really think Kelly Raquet ran the wrong at route. She ran a nine route, and Perea's looking for the quick post, and she wasn't there. That'll set up a third and three, at least a more manageable down for this offense. They will have a third and a fourth down to gain three yards. There is no punting in this position in the field. That's Alicia Watson in motion in the backfield. Handoff to K-Mac, showing good patience. But Lindsey Burst, I gotta tell you, that front line of Omaha defensively is playing one whale of a ball game. This defense, you're right, they got a swag about them tonight. Something's different than what we saw all year long. Watch Burst, stand, watch it. She looks like she's in position to get hit right now. Fields right at her, she stands her up, sheds her off, and makes a one-on-one -on -one tackle against K-Mac, who can get around anybody. That almost looked like Fields gave up on the block at the end, really just throwing her hands up for some reason. This front line of Denver, have they been coached up at all? Fourth and one. This is a design keeper up the middle. That should be a penalty. You cannot quarterback snake at the A-gap when the defense is three yards off the ball. Illegal procedure. Number three of the offense. She cannot go up the A-gap with fourth and less than three yards. Five-yard penalty, replay fourth down. 
that's a costly mistake by offensive coordinator Saul Anderson. You have to know the rules as a coach. That cost him five yards. What was a fourth and one now turns into a fourth and six. And to your point, you've got to know the rule book coming in. I don't care if you're a rookie coaching staff. you got to know the basics to give your athletes a chance at being successful. Absolutely. Now you put your quarterback in a tough spot. Fourth and six, fourth and one. You get it. Give the ball to K-Mac. Ball at the Denver 21. This time a good snap back to Perea. Perea now ad-libbing out in open field. And that's going to be enough for a Denver first down. So we've seen flashes from Perea. She's just got to get her arm straight. Do you think Perea has some game? There is absolutely nothing there, nothing open downfield. This is all Brittany Perea. A good block right there. She comes back and gets the first down. Fourth and six, and she comes up with it. Wow. For being 5'4", 130 pounds, you don't see Brittany Perea shying away from contact. And again, a Denver first down. Ball on the Omaha side of the field. Hand off to K-Mac. Good tackle. How about the play of Courtney Atwater? Courtney Atwater, she is having a defensive player of the game type night. Watch this. Again, it's Brittany Feathers. Here's the block. She's, it's like a pass block instead of a drive block. She just hits once and gets off her. That is not blocking. You mentioned it in the first half. Feathers, this is not her natural position center. She was converted from the tight end position because Michelle Look, the starting center, went down. Second and 10, ball at the Omaha 21. Another low snap. I'm sounding like a broken record. That complete to Lindsey Fields, but only for two yards. Good catch by Fields, but her numbers are down this year. You can see right there, only three receptions, one touchdown. And we heard from the coaching staff, her commitment wasn't there as much as it was last year. She missed a lot of practices, and it's showing on the field. Yeah, nobody can afford to miss that kind of practice time. And from the coaching staff's perspective, they've really kind of taken her out of the mix offensively. Third and eighth ball at the Omaha 19-yard line. Perea from the shotgun, handing it off to late handoff to K-Mac. That'll be a three-yard carry. Another read option. Perea wasn't sure whether to keep it or give it. She almost fumbled it. K-Mac made a good play by grabbing it, make positive yardage. So another fourth down opportunity for this Denver offense. And when you're down two scores with 3.30 remaining, you have got to convert here. If you're the Omaha defensive coordinator, Dante Allen, every time they get in a fourth down situation, Perea seems to keep it by herself. We'll see what happens. The rookie quarterback will need five yards. Here comes that Omaha crowd again. A low snap. Perea now just again off schedule play. She needed five yards. I don't think she got it. They're going to give her about four yards. And that'll be a turnover on downs. I think she wanted to throw a stop route to Kelly Roquet outside, but she was covered like a blanket. There's not much of a passing scheme that Denver has where you flood zones and make players make a commitment. Right there, it's Perea all on her own again. Yeah, I don't think the receivers are making that much of an effort to get open, and that's really hurting this offense. Omaha will take over on downs, leading this 26 to 14. Back after this. Back to LFL football night. Lindsey Noble and company having a great night here in Omaha. That's Jackie Good, who Lindsey Noble replaced at the quarterback position. And you can see the difference in this team. And it's nothing against Jackie Good. She's a good football player, just not a good quarterback. You really got to hand it to head coach Dante Allen for making a change. That change may have come too late. We will see the handoff back to Matei Vincent. And Vincent not able to really get off in the second half. She'll be contained to only about a yard. For Denver to have any chance tonight, they have to make a stop or a turnover, as Coach Janelle said. Right now, if I'm Omaha, and Lindsey Noble's throwing the ball great tonight, don't be scared to throw the football. 2.40 remaining. Denver does have both of its timeouts remaining. But they've got to get a stop here defensively. Second and nine. 
ball at the Omaha 13-yard line. Everybody in the house thinks that Omaha is going to keep it on the ground. One first down here wins you the football game. Lindsey Noble from the shotgun. That was a little miscommunication with Vincent. And Noble paying the price against the wall. She was jacked there by Jessica Johnson. Let's listen. Great hit by Johnson, sealing her against the wall. Denver. First time all night, Their Noble made a mistake. She went the half. wrong way. This will be a 30-second timeout. If we pin them deep here, they might just punt it. But guess what? They're going to try to run this clock down. Yeah. So there's two things. Watch. Don't fall for the play action. All right? Don't fall for the play action. And here I want for my safety. Pay attention to that tight end or center release. Jump that fucking route. Run it back. Same thing. Same thing. Got it? Lock it up. Let's go, D. Let's go. Fight. Fight. That's Denver defensive coordinator Marcus Janelle. And that young man's had a few too many beers. Did you piss somebody off today, Mitch? What was that all about? One of he our camera guys. You. I'm not sure who he's pointing at. Third and 11 from the shotgun. This time able to hand it off. That is Lundberg. A great tackle again by Jessica Johnson. Really conservative call by Dante Allen and Cale Good. They elected to try to run the football. It looks like Denver's going to get the football back. And we're going to take our two-minute warning. Omaha up 26 to 14. Back to LFL football night. Next week, we wrap up the regular season with the Omaha Heart traveling to the Windy City to take on Jane Caldwell and the Chicago Bliss. Mitch, he's still looking at you. There it is, he finally broke character. And down on the field, for the first time in LFL history, the entire offensive line named Game MVP. What if they lose the game? There's still two minutes left. Yeah, this may be a little premature. <laughs> that is Chelsea Hoffman, Lindsey Burse, and Shauna Wagner, better known as Mama Sita. They really have dominated in the trenches tonight. They really, I'm really proud of this team, the way they came back and played. But the game, there's a lot of action left. Two minutes in the LFL is a long time. And a key fourth down here, a fourth and eight. Omaha may be better off punting from here. They're at the 14-yard line, which you can punt up to the 15-yard line. What would you do in this scenario? I, actually, I absolutely would punt the football right now because they're not going to throw it. They showed us they're not going to throw it. You might as well pin them back deep. That looks like Lindsey Noble is at quarterback, so they may go for it here, which would be an ill-advised move because you're backed up to the 15-yard line. A turnover on downs gives Denver an opportunity to score pretty quickly here. If they would let her throw the football, yeah, she can throw it eight yards and get her first down, but they're not throwing the football. You called it. They're going to stay on the ground. Jamie Lundberg and the Denver defense coming up big. Shea Bellerion and Kelsey Cristiano. Wow, I cannot believe they called this play. They had no wide receivers. Everybody's in tight. There's no way she's going to find eight yards. Great play by the Denver defense. Now Denver has a short field going in the end zone. I got to tell you, there's been some bonehead calls made by the coaching staffs across the league. That's one of the worst I've seen. There's almost two minutes left in the football game. They can score quick with K-Mac at running back. I got to tell you, this Omaha coaching staff has been under fire all season, and rightfully so. Going back to the Jackie Good personnel decision to play her quarterback, some really ill-advised clock management, okay. and poor game situational awareness. You're giving a Denver team that needs two scores a short field. Well, just a negative attitude. You don't, you're not trying to win the football game. You're trying not to lose it. A first and 10, and that is complete. Finally, Kelly Roquet deciding to play football catches an 11-yard reception. Roquet showing strong hands there. Both players had hands on the ball. She just was stronger and pulled it in. They're moving the football. Here we go. 137 and counting. Denver down to one timeout. Perea under center, dropping back, trying the flat back of the end zone. Tried the back shoulder. 
to Shea Bellion, and Bellion drops it in the end zone. Bellion has to catch this football. Perfect pass by Perea right in her hands. Catch the ball. She whiffed on it. Unbelievable. We have seen numerous drops by this Denver offense. Brittany Perea has certainly put him in a position to be successful. A second and goal. Back to pass again into the flat. That's complete to Johnson. Touchdown, Denver. Wow, you want to take those MVP awards back? This game is not over. Great quick read by Perea. She quickly got it out in the flat. Nobody out there. They're right back in this ball game. Jessica Johnson with the surest hands on this roster. Hauls in a touchdown, making this a one-score game. I'm telling you, you cannot teach heart. Brittany Perea's got heart. She might not be a franchise quarterback, but she could be my quarterback any day of the week. So Denver now going for the one-point conversion from the one-yard line. Perea under center, toss right to K-Mac. Good blocking on the edge. Onside kick, get out there. Onside kick team. Tell her onside kick team. Tell them onside kick. That is head coach Adam Johnson. Obviously, Denver will line up for an onside kick here. You can hear a pin drop in the Ralston Arena. I haven't heard this quiet all night long. They know this game isn't over. I go back to that fourth and eight, and Omaha not electing to punt it. Instead, turning it over on downs and giving the Denver offense only a 15-yard field. That call in the play before at third and eight. They don't have the confidence in their quarterback, Noble, who's completed passes all night long. One first down, you win the football game. And here is the game on the line. Kelly Roquet with a deep kick. That ball is still rumbling around, and it's loose. That looked like maybe Lindsey Noble, the quarterback, recovered. Indeed. That was scary for a second. But the hero of the game, besides the offensive line for Omaha, has got to be Lindsey Noble. Lindsey Noble with great hands, heads up play. This is not a classic onside kick. It goes way deeper than you want. It hits one player right there. But watch Noble go back and smartly get in the ball. It squirts out once. It almost got ugly for Omaha, but Noble makes a play. That looked like maybe Kelly Roquet was trying to ricochet a football off one of the front line players for Omaha. Didn't work out that way. And now we look at the Eastern Conference standings. If Omaha holds on, they're two and one, and next week they play for the number two seed when they tangle with Chicago. They should be able to run this clock out. It looks like they're gonna be playing Chicago with a chance to advance. This is Noble going up the middle. A first and 10, that'll be a gain of three yards as the clock gets stopped here with a Denver timeout. Timeout, Denver. Their second and final timeout of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout. You have corners, you have to lock down, okay? The rest, I want to go get it. They're gonna go into that power staff. I want you to go get it. Mike, you read from there. If the tight end releases, okay? Safeties, you come up and just go, just go. I'm losing this game. We're going to go do what we got to do. Yeah. All right? Hit Shut him. it down. Hit him. Hit, Hit somebody. Right? Get your yeah. last shots in, all right? If they try to throw it, and we're back there, we pick six, and we're good. So the strategy here clearly to dislodge the football, that is what Denver needs is a turnover. Ready? Hey, Coach Dante Allen told me he's not going to do any release plays tonight. He just wanted to protect his new quarterback. A second and seven. Now they're going to go to victory formation. And I'm not sure they have enough time to just run it out. It might be a little bit early for that. In fact, I don't think that's going to help them out at all. That was a loss of three yards. So now that makes it a third and ten. And Noble should take her time getting under center here. There's still a lot of time left on that play clock. This is her first time at quarterback as a starter. You're right, she'd be looking at a play clock, let it get down to one, then snap the football. Lindsey Noble smartly looking over at that play clock. They're lined up in the victory formation again. This time Noble trying to surge ahead and regain some of that yardage. That'll be gain of six, setting up a fourth and four. 
And from doing the math here, Omaha will have to run one more play. They can't just run out the clock. No, they need to run a real play. They should have done it already, and it would be no problem. They should do victory. She's confused right now. We've got 15 seconds. There's about a four-second differential. I think the coaches are confused, too. You cannot take a knee on a fourth and four. That stops the clock. And now we got Mama Sita and Bria Quintana going after it. Hey, stay out, stay out, stay out. Hey, come on, come on. Get the fuck off of her. Put the fuck out of my hair. Put the fuck out of my hair. All hell breaking loose here in Score Omaha. Board, Scoreboard, bitches. An interesting final seconds. Now this turns the ball back over to Denver. With with seven seconds remaining. That's the worst coaching I ever saw. The players think the game over. Hey. I was trying to get you to wait. We had seven seconds. You pulled the hike at six. And then I wanted you to run the wedge. Shit. We might lose this game. Fuck. So that is miscommunication. one play. Miscommunication between Dante Allen and his quarterback, Lindsey Noble. He have to blame the coach. Result of the play was a turnover on downs. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 17, Denver. Also after the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, 14, Omaha. Those penalties offset, first down. Offense! You're going that way! I bet you're going that way! What's wrong with you? All night, the officiating crew has given us the wrong numbers. That was Suderman on Mama Sita, Shauna Wagner, 17 of Omaha. Nonetheless, here we go, buckle in folks. 6.9 seconds remaining as Denver takes over at the Omaha nine yard line. This is incredible. They get a chance to win this football game and knock Omaha out of a possible playoff spot. If Omaha wins today, they get a shot at making the playoffs, but if Denver scores right here, it's over. Let's not forget these two played a six to seven ball game earlier in the season, so they're matched up well. And that looked to be a false start at the top of the screen. That is Shea Bellary on her make it Vanna Medrano. False start, offense, number one. Five yard penalty remains first down. Again, the wrong number. That penalty was on number four, Vanna Medrano. All night long, the refs have been making mistakes. As is Denver, I can't believe right now you gotta tighten your game up, no mistakes, go score points. Ball backed up down to the 14-yard line. 5.6 seconds remaining from the shotgun. We've got a new center, Sasha Cruz. Nice snap back to Perea. Going to the end zone. And just deflected by Jamie Lundberg. That pass intended for Kelly Roque. Bad communication between the quarterback and Roque. Roque came in on a hook route. The ball was thrown outside like a back shoulder. That's Brittany Perea talking things over with her offensive coordinator, Saul Anderson. As Denver, their season comes down to a final two seconds. This is the play of the year for both teams. For Omaha, if they make a stop here, their playoff hopes stay alive. Yeah, if Omaha holds on, that is gonna be some game next week versus Chicago in Chicago. But getting back to this, this could be the final play of the game. Unbelievable. This is going to be a delay a game on Denver. Delay a game. Number three of the offense. Five yard penalty. Remain second down. Two minute offense, bro. So now I got 10 yards on that, dude. Because of stupid mistake. That is the voice of Denver coach Marcus Juniel, not happy with the execution of the offense. Not at all. You get a chance to win the football game and you have two offside penalties or, or motion penalties. Unbelievable. Here comes that Omaha crowd. This will be the final play of the game and the final play of the season for Denver. In motion, Kelly Roque. Priya back to pass in the pocket to the end zone. And just beyond the outstretched arms of Roquet. 
Wow, Perea put it out there. She had a shot. It was a fingertip job. Brocade could not get off the ground and get it. Watch, watch this. It's a great shot. A real shot right down the middle. Ball's there. She's open behind coverage. Just cannot jump up and grab it. The timing was thrown off by Shalyn Durham, who really broke up Roque within that five-yard gap. And that's what caused the overthrow. It's unbelievable that Roque got behind coverage. A good pass. They win the football game. How about the effort of this Omaha Heart team being left for dead? And now, with a big win at home, 26 to 21, they keep their playoff hopes alive as they go to Chicago next week. I'm going to tell you what, they're going to be big underdogs to Chicago, but you know what? You have to play the football game. The way they're playing right now, hot football, they have a hot quarterback. Anything can happen up there. Let's go down to the field with Heidi Goldsnick. Guys, I am with a pair of difference makers tonight, Lindsay Noble and Mitte Vinson. First, Lindsay, how great does it feel to finally get a win? It feels awesome. We owed that to our fans tonight. Uh, we, they definitely needed that. All right, and now, Mate, you are coming into your own as a running back. Where is your confidence level right now? Um, honestly, it's past 1,000. Like, I can't even explain how uh, well I've done tonight. And then I also, I can't forget my own line and my quarterback. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to do the things that I do. So I got to give it up to them. They're my, they're my everything. All right, guys, a much-needed win tonight here in Omaha, and they're going to stay alive in playoff contention. Back to you guys. This sets up the game in Chicago. If Omaha plays like they did tonight, who knows? It might become the greatest upset in the history of the LFL. As far as tonight, this Omaha hard team rallied behind Lindsey Noble and Matei Vincent and getting a big 26-21 win over the Denver Dream, keeping their season hopes alive. For Bobby Huco, our sideline reporter Heidi Golznick, this is Mitch Mortaza. We will see you next week from the Windy City.